In a time when television was searching for the ultimate spectacle, one show stood above them all. Welcome to the story of Gladiators, a captivating retrospective into the thrilling world of one of the most iconic TV shows in British history. For almost a decade, Gladiators ruled the airwaves, captivating millions with its blend of athleticism and fierce competition. From 1992 to 2000, the nation held its breath as ordinary men and women took on the challenge of a lifetime, facing off against the formidable gladiators in epic battles of strength, skill, and determination. Week after week, fans witnessed the rise of legends like Wolf, Jet, Hunter, and Lightning, larger-than-life characters who became household names. These extraordinary athletes pushed themselves to the brink entertaining viewers with their awe-inspiring agility, strength, and showmanship. Beyond the glitz and glamour, Gladiators became a platform for personal triumphs and unforgettable stories. Contestants from all walks of life found themselves in the spotlight, discovering their inner strength and inspiring others with their determination to succeed. Join me on a journey through time as we delve into the history, legacy, and enduring impact of Gladiators. The Gladiators! There are many who will agree that television in the UK hit its peak in the 1990s when audiences were treated to a remarkable array of shows. Children had an endless lineup of captivating programs at their fingertips, from the fantastical world of Pokemon and the adrenaline fueled adventures of the mighty Morphin Power Rangers to the zany antics of Zap. Meanwhile, the era also marked the introduction of timeless sitcoms like Father Ted, The Vicar of Dibley, and One Foot in the Grave. Four, two, nine, what? and American sensations like Knight Rider, Baywatch, and the iconic Friends enthralled millions. There was just something magical about that era. In a time when the internet was still in its infancy, TV shows would have to be watched live, unless you had the luxury of recording it on your trusty VCR. Gathering around the television as a family or with friends, eagerly awaiting the arrival of our favorite show became an irreplaceable tradition forever etched in our memories. One night of the week held unparalleled significance for broadcasters, Saturday nights. This coveted slot consistently demanded the highest viewership, making it the ultimate platform for channels to showcase their top tier programming, ensuring viewers remained captivated. And one Saturday night show, certainly in my opinion, stands above the rest, and that was Gladiators. The UK version of Gladiators was an adaptation of its American predecessor, which first debuted in 1989. However, its origins go back even further to 1982. At Erie Tech High School in Erie, Pennsylvania, Johnny Ferraro and Dan Carr hosted the inaugural Gladiators competition. Their aim was to raise funds for a new community hall. But little did they know that this event would ignite a spark in Johnny's imagination driving him to transform the concept into a Hollywood blockbuster. After years of relentless pursuit, Johnny finally succeeded in convincing Ron Ziskin and the Samuel Goldwyn Company to produce American Gladiators. But Ron envisaged the show as a television series rather than a film, leading to the birth of the original American Gladiators TV show in September 1989. It would take another three years for the British rendition of Gladiators to make its grand debut on October 10th, 1992. Instantly capturing the hearts of viewers across the nation, this exhilarating spectacle left an indelible mark on the fabric of British television history. For those unaware, here's a brief summary of the format of Gladiators. 
there were eight regular series in total during the original run of Gladiators, as well as a number of other specials and international episodes. Each episode would see four contenders, two men and two women, brave the challenge of facing the mighty gladiators whilst at the same time competing against each other for points. The contenders battled it out in a series of events, usually five or six in total, which would test their strength, agility and determination against the gladiators. Points were awarded based on the contenders' performance, with a win usually earning them ten points. Each episode would culminate with the Eliminator. The contender with the highest points from the preceding events received a head start in the Eliminator, with a 0.5 second advantage for every point they were ahead of their competitor. This final race to the finish line determined who would advance to the next round of the competition. While each series would have a varying number of episodes, a typical series would contain eight heats, four quarterfinals, two semi-finals, and a grand final. All episodes of Gladiators were recorded at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham, currently in 2023 known as the Utilita Arena. Let's now take a look at the show's presenters and main cast, as well as the formidable Gladiators. Gladiators had three main presenters across the eight series, who each brought their own unique flair. Ulrika Johnson took the helm as the main presenter from the very first episode, while footballer John Fashionu fearlessly stepped into the hosting role and became an iconic figure with his catchphrase However, during Series 6 and 7, rugby player Jeremy Guscott took over the reins from Fashioner, bringing a fresh perspective to the show. Guiding us through the thrilling action was the incredible narrator John Sachs, whose voice added an extra layer of excitement to each episode. And ensuring fair play and upholding the rules was referee John Anderson, known for his no-nonsense approach he made sure the games were played by the book, and I think we all know his famous catchphrase. Contenders, ready! Ready the toss, ready! But even John Anderson had his rival in the form of the Wolfman, with whom he had numerous clashes throughout the series. Behave yourself, or you will take no further part. Now go! He started it! Don't come back! Go! He started it! Get up! A total of 34 different gladiators made appearances, each leaving their mark on the hearts of viewers. Some graced the main series only for a season or two, while others participated solely in live shows that weren't televised. In the inaugural series of 1992, we were introduced to 12 powerful gladiators. Jet, Warrior, Lightning, Shadow, Cobra, Panther, Wolf, Flame, Hawk, Phoenix, Saracen, and Scorpio. Series 2 saw the addition of Falcon, Nightshade, Zodiac, Hunter, and Trojan. The Gladiators lineup remained unchanged in Series 3. However, Series 4 brought us new faces, including Amazon, Vogue, Raider, and Rhino. Sadly, Series 4 also saw Shadow's departure from the show due to steroid use, leading to personal struggles and legal troubles in subsequent years. Series 5 introduced Laser, Rebel, Rio, and Ace to the Gladiator family, while Series 6, 7, and 8 showcased the talents of Fox, Gold, Rocket, Diesel, Khan, Siren, and Vulcan. Series 5 earned the moniker The Season of Injury, as some gladiators faced unfortunate setbacks. Jet suffered an injury during a live show before the series began, marking the end of her gladiator career. 
Amazon endured a severe knee injury, leading to her retirement and subsequent replacement by Laser. And Zodiac and Nightshade made sporadic appearances due to their own injury struggles. It was also during Series 5 that rumors began to circulate in the media about a romantic relationship between Hunter and presenter Ulrika Johnson, something they denied at the time, but was later revealed to be true. There were two other gladiators who didn't appear on the regular series, but instead featured during some of the live shows. They were Blaze and Bullet. In an unexpected turn of events in 1993, Phoenix, Hawk, and Flame faced their untimely departure from the show after receiving the fewest number of votes in a magazine poll following the Wembley live shows. This decision was heavily criticized at the time, and series director Nigel Lithgow, who you may know better as Nasty Nigel, was slammed by critics for the decision. Interestingly, Cobra, Lightning, and Saracen three of only four gladiators to appear in every series, the other being the Wolfman, didn't audition to be gladiators. Cobra and Lightning were selected as contestants and were only chosen as main gladiators hours before the first recording after it was decided that two more gladiators were required. And Saracen auditioned to be a contestant, but impressed the judges so much that he was offered a place on the main gladiator roster. Everyone certainly had their favorite gladiators. Growing up, I loved watching Hunter, Saracen, Trojan, Rhino, Jet, and Lightning. Who were your favorites? Let me know in the comments below. Throughout its original eight-year run, Gladiators showcased a total of 24 electrifying events. Some made occasional appearances, some featured in all eight series, while others were tested during live shows, but never made it to the main program. Let's delve into the highlights of these extraordinary challenges. Atlas Spheres, one of my personal favorites, was the very first event to be broadcast in the first heat of series one. Contenders and gladiators found themselves enclosed in large spherical cages, with contenders racing to roll their atlas spheres over scoring pods while evading the gladiator's attempts to knock them off course. This event lasted all the way until the end of Series 8 and was certainly a fan favorite. Four other events featured in all eight of the original series. Swingshot, an exhilarating game where contenders bounced on bungee ropes to grab colored balls, the Wall, a formidable challenge where contenders raced to the top while evading the pursuing gladiators. Duel, an all-out slugfest between contenders and gladiators. And Hang Tough, an awe-inspiring aerial battle that demanded remarkable upper body strength and agility. Series 1 witnessed a controversial moment during a run on the Wall. Contender Nicola Bodden faced accusations of bad sporting conduct when it was revealed that she had greased her legs and untied her shoelaces to make it more challenging for the gladiator to catch her. Although Scorpio briefly managed to grab Nicola, she slipped off moments later. Scorpio filed a complaint, but as there were no rules at the time preventing the contender from doing this, no penalty was issued. However, the rules were promptly amended and Scorpio had her revenge in the series semi-final. The other event to debut in series one was Danger Zone, in which contenders attempted to make their way across the arena floor, dodging high-speed tennis balls and attempting to hit a target positioned above the gladiator. I fondly recall having a toy of this event as a child, making it one of my personal favorites. Series 2 saw a couple of new events debut, including Gauntlet, Joust, Powerball, Skytrack, Suspension Bridge, and Tilt. Powerball was perhaps the most loved of these new events, a game that is sort of like a combination of basketball and rugby. The female gladiators would always make their entrance to We Are Family by Sister Sledge, 
while the male gladiators marched into the arena to The Boys Are Back in Town by Thin Lizzy. Series 3 brought four fresh events into the competition. Hit and Run, Poleaxe, Pursuit, and Pyramid. Pursuit lasted for only three series, while Pyramid remained for four. However, Hit and Run and Poleaxe would feature all the way until the end of Series 7. Just two new events were introduced in Series 4, Whiplash and Pendulum. As a child, I always dreamed of trying my hand at Pendulum. In Series 5, 6 and 7, a few new events were introduced, but were not particularly well received by fans, including Catapult, Dogfight, Tightrope, Sumo Ball, and Vertigo. And finally, the only event to feature in every single episode, the final showdown, The Eliminator. There were no gladiators on this one, just a flat-out race to the finish line. While the stages of the Eliminator underwent minor changes over time, the general layout remained consistent. In Series 1, contenders encountered a cargo net with a slide on the other side as the first obstacle, but this was soon replaced with high and low beams, which I think were the best obstacle to start off with. In Series 5, a bungee maze was added at the end of this obstacle, requiring contestants to navigate through a series of elastic ropes, and Series 6 introduced a double-sided cargo net at this stage. The next stage involved a scramble sheet or a rope climb, leading contenders to two platforms that needed crossing. Female contenders relied on hand ladders, while male contenders grappled with the demanding hand bike which looked incredibly difficult. Following this, contenders would traverse rolling beams or trapezes to reach a third platform before facing the imposing cargo net. This was an area where if you could climb quickly, time could be made up if you were behind. And then, the most exhilarating part of the Eliminator, a breathtaking zipline descent from the top of the arena back to the ground. With the finish line within reach, contenders tackled a single balance beam, or two seesaws, before confronting the ultimate obstacle of the course, the dreaded Travelator. This towering challenge put their fitness and determination to the ultimate test, often leading to incredible drama. It's Nick and Nick. Oh yeah, Colin's gone, and Mark's gone. This is incredible drama. After successfully conquering the Travelator, contenders simply had to grab a rope and swing through a paper barrier to emerge victorious. The Eliminator was such a nail-biting way to end every episode of Gladiators, leaving you hungry to tune in next week for more. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite events were. For Series 7, the show decided to make some changes to freshen things up. As well as new gladiators and games being brought in, the gladiators were also sporting new attire for the first time. However, these changes did nothing to save the show from declining viewing figures, and the show was eventually cancelled on February 11th, 1999. One final series was agreed, airing during the Christmas season of 1999. This last series was only four episodes long, featuring two heats and one grand final, and a special episode airing on Christmas Day called Battle of the Giants, which saw gladiators compete against each other to crown the ultimate gladiator. The heats and grand final consisted of past champions battling it out for the title of Champion of Champions. January 1st, 2000 marked the end of an era when the final episode of the original one of Gladiators was broadcast to fans across the country. And for the first time on Gladiators here, it's not good night, it's farewell.
Gladiators wasn't just a game show, it was a cultural phenomenon. One of the reasons Gladiators was so well loved was its ability to bring families and friends together. In an era before streaming and on-demand services, viewers gathered around their television sets on Saturday nights, eagerly anticipating the thrill and excitement of Gladiators. It became a shared experience, a time when people could bond over their favorite contestants and cheer for their beloved Gladiators. Gladiators also left a lasting legacy by showcasing the extraordinary physical capabilities of its contestants and gladiators. The show undoubtedly inspired a generation to embrace fitness and athleticism, motivating many to participate in sports and pursue active lifestyles. The feats of strength and agility performed by the gladiators served as a source of inspiration showing viewers that with dedication and determination, they too could push their physical limits. The impact of Gladiators extended beyond the show's original run. It remains a nostalgic touchstone for many who grew up watching the show, evoking fond memories of a bygone era. The show's theme song, the larger-than-life personalities of the Gladiators, and the iconic events continue to be celebrated and referenced in popular culture. Eight years later, it was announced that Sky Television had commissioned a revival of the show, which debuted on May 11, 2008. The show featured a new lineup of gladiators and revamped versions of some of the events from the original series most notably events like Duel and Hang Tough now being played over water. And the Wolfman even returned to be the Gladiator's leader of the pack. However, this revived show only ran for two series before being cancelled once again. In July 2022, it was reported that the BBC were in talks with MGM, who owned the rights to the Gladiator's franchise, to relaunch the show on BBC One. After being confirmed by the BBC, we now know that this revived series will return sometime in 2023, although as of the recording of this film, no premiere date has been set. However, we already know quite a bit about what the show will look like. The series will consist of 11 60-minute episodes, the old Gladiator's logo is back, giving the show a nostalgic feel, and the new gladiators have been revealed. We have Apollo, Athena, Bionic, Comet, Diamond, Dynamite, Electro, Fire, Fury, Giant, Legend, Nitro, Phantom, Saber, Steel, and Viper. Great names. Kate Phillips, BBC director of Unscripted, said, Gladiators is back, and a whole new generation of viewers can now look forward to watching a Saturday night spectacle like no other. Will the contenders have the will and the skill to succeed against our mighty new gladiators? You'll have to tune in to find out. The show will be hosted by Bradley Walsh and his son Barney, and the referees include Mark Clattenburg, former football referee, Sonia Umkoloma, a former English international netball player, and Lee Phillips, a fitness professional, firefighter, and athlete. Here's hoping this new revival lives up to its expectations and gives us all that boost of nostalgia and joy that we've been craving. My thanks to you for watching. Gladiators holds a special place in my heart. As I have researched for this video, I went back and watched some episodes from the original run, and it just felt like being a kid again. The show has great rewatchability, so check out some episodes if you get a chance. If you enjoyed this retrospective look back into the past, I would appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. In doing so, you would be really helping the channel. Thank you, and see you again.